<laughs> this is actually going to be a two prong thing. Bill Watts, uh, shortly before the clash, announces yeah. that if wrestlers miss time due to injury, they will be paid workman's compensation, but not their full guarantee. Which leads us to Rick Rude not yeah. making the Starcade pay per view a couple of weeks earlier, and he would remain on the sidelines until March 1993 due to bulging discs in his neck. How much. Uh, this is probably going to be an unfair question, actually, now that I read it back uh, very briefly. But how much of Rude's injuries do you think were a work, if any, to get the Lloyds of London compensation sort of uh, squared away in that sense? Because he wrestled till somewhere in 94, and then he retired due to neck and back issues. But then a few years yeah. later, when you knew him really well in ECW, it seemed like he was desperate to get back in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Well, my understanding at the time was that you had like, I, I, I want to say it was two years. Like if you made the claim on the Lloyds uh, and all those uh, uh, Minneapolis boys, uh, as I recall, if not all of them, a good chunk of them had gotten the 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 payout. And uh, uh, at some point we go back uh, to wrestling. I, I want to say as my memory serves, it was like a two, you couldn't wrestle for two years. Then after that, you you, know, you, you were clear. Well, uh, actually, I'll, I'll jump in very briefly here. Apparently, uh, if Rick Rude had been off th more than three months, he would have got $20,000 a month, uh, and then he would have also got the back pay for the three months that he was off as well. So that's for his specific deal. But also, it gets a bit more convoluted when it's combined with his existing contract, who he signed with Kip Fry as well, which would have been a favorable contract uh, for Rick at that point. Sure. Rather, far more favorable than Bill would have written it, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and look, contracts are as they're written. Like you don't get to come in tomorrow and say, well, here's my interpretation on the contract. I mean, you can try that in court, but it's probably not going to stand. Um, you know, so again, as my, and I can't speak on Rick's or Mike's or you know, the, uh, the Kurt's, the different people that had those, uh, Lloyd's of London. I do know that Lloyd's of London, right in that same time frame, wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, insure wrestlers anymore. Uh, so, you know, I, I do remember the bump that he took in Japan, mm -hmm. you know, where the, the, the floor was darkened and he took the bump thinking he was falling to the floor and here the floor was beyond the stage, like another 12 or 14 inches lower. And I remember the bump, you know, it was pretty nasty on top of his head. Um, and, uh, you, you know, Rick, he, Rick was such a great performer. Like, he, you know, even with injury, you could be able to cover it up, I'm sure. But uh, he... When he came to ECW, you could tell that he wasn't quite the Rick Rude that, that I had known in 90, uh, you know, that or even 93 later uh, in WCW. Um, you know, there's always the rumors in the, the, the Minneapolis guys worked the whole thing. Uh, uh, I saw the bump that Rick took and <laughs> would shock me if he wasn't injured. Uh, you know, so that, that that to me, that's one of those things. That I'm not trying to be vague, but it, it's one of those things that had become such like a, an almost urban legend in the dressing room. You know, these guys all got this insurance and, you know, all took sooner or later. They all claimed on it. And, uh, uh, you know, a bill coming out and making the claim saying, well, you know, from this point forward, you only be paid this way, not that way. That would all contain be contained in the, in the contract. So uh, my guess is the way that Kip was giving out the contracts. And I had never worked for Kip. Uh, Marty and I were supposed to go as the as the, uh, the new rockers we, uh, before <laughs> there was a woman found dead at his house after a party. Um, uh, but it sounded to me as though Kip Fry was just handing out like really sweet deals to everybody. And, uh, you know, those guys were also, you know, Rick especially. And I say that because I, my interactions with Rick and listening to him talking about like what supplement to take and what time of the day and what to take it with and when to stop it. It was almost like he was a pharmacist mm -hmm. and uh, you know, but it, like I've you know, often said that in those things, you'd have that, you know, that, that sense of really real intelligence. And then that would turn right around. And like, if one was good, 10 was better. Um, you know, and I, I think most lay people know that that's, that's a fool's uh, approach. But these guys, to me, they it had become such like urban legend in the dressing room that the guys would openly talk about it in the dressing room. And this, you know, there was a part of it that almost seemed like a worked aspect, like they're pulling our leg because it couldn't be that easy to go get a couple million bucks from Lloyd's and uh, especially in professional wrestling. Uh, but my understanding was that a bunch of them didn't. If you go back and look at that time frame, there were times when they, a lot of these guys were off for 
you know, extra, extended portions of time. And uh, and then I know Lloyd's, like I said, right after that, like closed that door, no more wasn't covering wrestling anymore. So, um, but the, you know, again, like with Rick, specifically with Rick, uh, rude the the bump that he took in Japan. And I'm sure anybody can pull it up on YouTube and see. Uh, it was a hellacious bump, and you know, it, it's hard to explain to fans, I guess. But like when, in, the, in the old setup where they had the lights over the ring, and you know, the rest of the building was sort of darkened out. Uh, there's been plenty of times that I've been in the ring and you look down from the apron and it just looks like a bottomless pit. You know, you really can't see a floor. It's just dark. And, you know, you, you could jump off and think you're landing here and you're really landing here or here. Uh, you know, and the, the bump that he took with that, I, I, you know, I forget if it was a senton or, but the, you know, the guy coming out and catch him and Rick going back thinking he's going to hit this way. And he actually hits this way, uh, you know, on top of his head with that extra, extra weight on top of it. So it was a really, for those of us that know bumps, uh, it, it was a, a bump that was shocking that if he didn't snap his neck, uh, mm. you know, because it was that kind of a bump, you know, into that dark black. 